Welcome to my channel. Every day, we're bombarded with a steady stream of news about new technology, discoveries, and the world. You see them reported in magazines, television, online, or in books like National Geographic. But one thing you don't hear much about is the most amazing abandoned ships in the world. These old vessels have fallen through a time warp into obscurity, but can still be found scouring floating platforms. It's hard to fathom that some of the most truly astonishing abandoned ships in the world are wasting away on our planet. But yet they are these vessels have all seen better days. So you might want to brace yourself for some heart-wrenching photos of these abandoned marvels. We'll be exploring 20 most amazing abandoned ships in the world. Number 20. Costa Concordia The most well-known maritime accident of the 21st century was the Costa Concordia shipwreck in 2012. The cruise ship hit a rock in January of that year off the coast of the Mediterranean island of Isola del Giglio. It started to list dangerously to starboard before coming to rest with a tilt of about 90 degrees in shallow water. The massive ocean liner shattered remnants are currently being demolished in the Italian port city of Genoa. The 50,000 tons of steel from it are being melted down and used in shipbuilding and construction projects. It's disputed whether Captain Francesco Schettino wanted to impress his girlfriend. Chettino insisted that the ship sailed close to the beach to salute fellow seafarers and give guests a nice view. However, the Italian courts determined that the captain, four crew members, and one representative of the ship's corporation, Costa Corcieri, a division of Carnival Corporation, were responsible for the accident in hindering a safe evacuation. The accident resulted from a succession of human blunders. It was not the fault of unforeseen weather or ship malfunction. Brian Schoenwald, a senior maritime inspector with the United States Coast Guard, claims that there is never a single cause component. In incidents like the Concordia, usually it takes a series of unfortunate circumstances to result in that incident. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Floating Forest, SS Airfield, Shipwreck Homebush Bay in Sydney is the spot for anyone whose pulse beats quicker when encountering old and abandoned objects. This is where a lot of abandoned 20th century ships landed. The SS Airfield, one of these sunken ships, is unquestionably the most striking sight, thanks to all the lush vegetation blooming inside its corroded shell. This 102-year-old, 1,140-ton ship has the nickname Floating Forest among the locals due to the fully grown mangrove trees. During the 60-mile collier run between Newcastle and Sydney, the SS Airfield transported supplies to American forces in the Pacific Ocean. When the operations to demolish the old ship in the bay in 1972 ended, the bay was no longer used as a shipwreck yard. The SS Arafield and numerous other ships from World War II were just left in place to deteriorate and be reclaimed by lovely nature. In addition to its past as a site for shipbreaking and the Erie Ghost Ship Cemetery, Homebrush Bay is now the location of the Olympic Stadium. Many tourists are drawn to the bay because of the stunning forest alone. Even though some are passionate about photographing various abandoned objects, what an image. Number 18. Swedish flagship in the 16th century. Galleons and warships from the 16th century have already been discovered on the ocean floor by explorers and marine archaeologists. But for several reasons, discovering the 97-foot-long Swedish galleon Mars has sparked great excitement. The shipwreck at the bottom of the Baltic Sea is astonishingly well-maintained. Looking at it feels like going back in time. For 20 years, Lundgren had been looking for Mars. It wasn't just him. Many people have a fixation on finding Mars because of the boat's notoriety and the purported curse surrounding its discovery. Mars, named after the Roman god of war, was the biggest and most dreaded warship of its era. It was sunk in the course of its very first naval combat, making it the head of the Swedish navy. It all started with Swedish King Erik XIV's ambition to strengthen his nation's navy. He gave the go-ahead to build one of Europe's first substantial three-masted ships. The king gave his commander orders to send out the Mars as part of a massive fleet headed towards Denmark and Lübeck, now in modern Germany, where it would use its guns to destroy ships. 
Whatever caused it, on May 31st, 1564, the Mars sank off the shore of the Swedish island of land. It landed on the ocean floor with its starboard side inclined. Number 17. Sunken Yacht in Antarctica The yacht, owned by prominent Brazilian businessman and journalist Ju Lara Mesquita, was sinking with four people inside. Off the coast of Antarctica, the team was busy recording a documentary when a powerful wind of more than 100 km per hour seized the boat and pushed it up against the ice. The crew members radioed a mayday while stranded in frigid conditions and the Chilean Navy at the Antarctic base of Bahia Fidel's received it. All four researchers were saved. However, the operation took longer than expected due to severe weather. Operations were extremely difficult due to wave heights of about 2 meters and gusts of 40 knots, according to a crew member of the Endless Sea. The documentary makers hopped on board the Chilean Navy boat as soon as it was able to get close, bringing them eventually to safety. For the most part, things went according to plan, although Mar Sim Fim, who was at the moment completely uncoverable, did not. The Marsim Fim boat sank to the bottom of that tiny bay, just 10 meters deep, due to chilly water entering the hull, freezing and expanding. At the beginning of 2013, it was possible to see the boat from above for a whole year. When the weather permitted, owner Ju Lara Mesquita sent divers to wrap the hull with suspenders fastened to inflatable buoys on either side. Number 16. A Mysterious Ghost Ship, USA this stunning piece of history can be seen approximately 20 miles downstream from Cincinnati, Ohio, along the Ohio River. She was given the name Kselt when she was put into service on April 12, 1902 in Wilmington, Delaware. She was a steam-powered luxury yacht that measured 186 feet in length and was operated by steam. In July 1917, the United States Navy rented the ship Selt from the person who owned the vessel. The United States Navy rechristened her the USS Sackham SP-192. Her purpose was to use depth charges to sink any German U-boats that came into range. In addition, she was armed with several machine guns that allowed her to counterattack torpedoes from any angle. In November of 1918, she was successfully and safely delivered back to her owner. She retained her new name and was put to use as a fishing vessel for private and commercial purposes in the waters close to Brooklyn, New York. In 1932, when the Great Depression was in full swing, she was sold for $2 to a new owner so that the former owner, struggling to provide for his family due to the economic situation, could get some food. She stayed with her new owner for the next 10 years until the United States Navy decided to look for her again. Number 15. Hospital ship Australia abandoned SS Mahino ocean liner. The rusting and abandoned WW1 hospital ship washes ashore on Fraser Island after being lost in a typhoon. She was designed for comfort, but when World War I started, she enlisted in the military, converting her dining rooms into medical wards until a hurricane washed her away. The 5,000 ton steel hulled SS Mahino was initially built and utilized as an ocean liner traveling back and forth across the Tasman Sea. It was enlisted in 1915 to work as a hospital ship moving injured people between Sydney and Melbourne. She was eventually called to the UK where she helped the injured soldiers in Europe by transporting them over to the English Channel from France to England. The SS Mahino returned to New Zealand at the end of the war to carry perfectly healthy people over the ocean once more. And in July 1935, she was sold to an Osaka shipbreaker. She will sadly never make it to her new house since a storm was brewing. After three agonizing days, the ship and her camped out crew were discovered beached on Fraser Island. The SS Mahino, the luxurious liner that provided care for many injured soldiers, was stripped off its belongings and left to the elements after fruitless attempts to refloat the ship. Although the rusted wreckage of the ship is still visible, it's not safe for people to enter the area. Number 14. SS American Star on August 22, 1938, SS America's plans were revealed as part of the first Maritime Commission contract. The Newport News Shipbuilding and Dry Dock Company, located in Newport News, Virginia, was to construct the vessel. Famous naval architect William Francis Gibbs created America, built for the United States Lines Corporation. She was one of the few ocean liners at the time with interiors created by women. Eleanor Roosevelt, the wife of the American president, supported the launch of the SS America 
on August 31, 1939. America served her owners diligently for 55 years until finally coming to a grief in 1994 when she ran aground in the Canary Islands. She is still there, abandoned and deteriorating. The American military was in dire need of transportation after entering World War II. Frequently, the armed forces were given temporary access to non-essential civilian ships. On June 1, 1941, the Navy bought the America, which was moored at Norfolk, for service as a troop transport. The vessel was given the new name USS West Point. She eventually received a new name, America, and was transferred back to the civilian sector. A sister ship operated by United States Lines, the SS The United States, joined her in 1952. America's reign as King of the U.S. Merchant Navy was brief after the arrival of the larger and faster ship in 1952. Number 13. Kiptipeki Concrete Ships at night, the fishing pier close to Kiptipeki State Park is illuminated by the standard streetlights in the area. After a few hundred yards, the ghostly glow appears into the darkness of the water, but if you stare into the darkness for a sufficient amount of time, you will begin to make out the towering phantom fleet that looks to be nearing the coast. The concrete fleet, often referred to as the Kiptopeki Breakwater, is comprised of several concrete ships lined up end-to-end -end just to the west of the location of the former Chesapeake Bay Ferry Terminal. The deteriorating hulks are composed of nine of the 24 concrete ships commissioned for construction by the United States Maritime Commission during World War II. In 1948, in preparation for adverse weather, the ships were moved to Kiptopeki Beach, where they now serve as a protective barrier for the terminal. After everything was put up, the bilge cocks of the ships were opened so that the water could enter, and then they were allowed to sink to the bottom of the bay. Number 12. The Mary D. Hume Shipwreck This historic steamer has been scuttled just a few hundred feet from the location where it was constructed more than a century ago. Mary D. Hume still maintains the record for the Pacific Coast's longest serving ship with 97 years of active service, and she is still in retirement today as she slowly rots away next to an Oregon beach. The Hume was a ship built in 1881 by Mr. R. D. Hume of Astoria, Oregon, and was given his wife's name. Mary Duncan Hume transported cargo from Oregon to San Francisco for her first 10 years. Pacific Whaling Company brought the ship in 1889 and for 10 years that followed her sail, it was used to hunt baleen in the Arctic, setting a record in only one 29-month expedition. The Mary D. began providing towing services on the Alaska Nushagak River in 1899 and was later purchased by the American Tugboat Company. She briefly worked in the Alaskan halibut industry in 1914 before returning to her job as a tugboat for an additional 60 years. Only a few hundred feet from her initials location, Mary D. Hume finally retired to Gold Beach in 1978. There she currently rests, slowly sinking into the muck. The vessel was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1979. Number 11. Wreck of the Peter Iredale this image, taken by Portland photographer Leo Simon on November 13, 1906, 19 days after the ship ran aground at Fort Stevens, depicts the wreck of the Peter Iredale. The Iredale was a four-masted steel bark owned by the British shipping company Iredale & Porter that was constructed at Maryport, England in 1890. The Iredale departed Salina Cruz, Mexico on September 26, heading for Portland, where it will pick up a shipment of wheat for the United Kingdom. They safely arrived at the Columbia River's mouth early on October 25th, despite experiencing dense fog. H. Lawrence, the ship's captain, later recalled that a hard southeast wind blew and a strong current prevailed as they waited for a pilot. Before the ship could be turned around, she had already entered the breakers and all attempts to hold her off had failed. Three of the Iredale's masts were broken by the impact when she ran aground at Cast Up Beach. Fortunately, no crew member suffered a significant injury. Rockets were launched to call for assistance when Captain Lawrence ordered them to abandon the ship. The shattered bar quickly became a popular tourist destination. The Oregon Journal stated that the wreck proved a tremendous attraction, and in spite of the gale that was howling, dozens came to the scene of the calamity the day after the ship fell aground. They mentioned the Astoria and Columbia River Railroad's intention to operate excursion trains to the location. Number 10. Wreck of Francisco Morazan 
Just off South Manitou Island in Lake Michigan are the resting remnants of a tragic freighter. The weathered wreckage of the SS Francisco Morazan is located not far off the southwest shore of the South Manitou Island. The steel-hulled Liberian freighter, which had her maiden voyage in June 1922, was attempting to travel from Chicago to the Netherlands via the St. Lawrence Seaway in late November 1960. Unfortunately, Lake Michigan and Mother Nature had other plans for the ship and crew. On November 28th, the freighter saw snowfall and winds gusting to the northwest at 40 miles per hour. South Manitou Island, which is now a portion of Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore, is where it ran aground. The 14-person crew and captain were safely saved, but the ship eventually perished in the choppy lake waters and bad weather. There is still the rusting hull of the Morazan there, and it is visible from the island. When the weather is warmer, divers can examine the wreckage, mostly inhabited by seabirds. A curious turn led to the Francisco Morazan, originally named the Arcadia, sinking just 40 miles north of the Arcadia Dunes in the community of Arcadia, Michigan. Number 9. MV Asalama Shipwreck Because there were only two lifeboats on board, the Asalama mishap did not turn tragic thanks to the fishermen alone. The fishermen swiftly rescued all 113 passengers, most of whom were Moroccans and Spaniards, including at least 80 Canarios. Following the Asalama's SOS call, at least 10 fishermen, the Pateras, famous for their drama about African refugees, immediately launched their small boats into the water. The skilled fishermen could maneuver their little boats near enough to the wrecked ship despite the high seas for the passengers to change. The insurance company was unable to decide because of the high costs of salvage when the ship was intended to be transported to the port of Las Palmas de Gran Canaria for repairs. The salvage costs were estimated to be between 15 and 20 million euros. To discuss the status of a new ferry connection, Blas Acosta, the president of Cabildo de Fuerteventura, met with Juan Jess Rodriguez, the president of the Foreign Trade Commission of the Chamber of Fuerteventura, and Mohamed Salem Bahia, the president of the provincial Council of Tarfaya in October of this year. The letter from the Moroccan minister states that the renewed operation won't be approved until the ship of misery is removed. Number 8. Demetrios Shipwreck An enormous cargo ship from the 20th century named Demetrios has lain wrecked on Selenista Beach since 1981. Although many refer to this ship as a ghost ship, its origins are still unclear. It's thought it was used to transport contraband cigarettes between Turkey and Italy. According to the book of Ta Navagia, Stis Elenicus Thalassus, this ship moored in the port of Gaithio due to an emergency because the captain required medical attention. The ship was abandoned at the same port location due to several issues, the majority of which were financial, and was deemed hazardous in 1981. The ship was carried to its present location as severe weather began to develop. In the past, many travelers would stop while others would go to see the scenery. Due to the introduction of numerous digital platforms and social media sites that feature its images, it may be said that initially just a small number of individuals were drawn to it, but with time it began to draw a larger number of admirers. Many visitors today feel compelled to take a picture of it, either by itself or with them in the background. They do this by treating the ship like a monument. Number 7. La Famille Express The La Famille Express's history, commonly referred to as the Long Bay Shipwreck, began in 1953 at a far colder location, the Soviet Union. The ship was originally used to transport supplies to far-off offshore oil wells on oil rigs. The ship was given the name Fort Shevchenko, in honor of the military port city on the Caspian Sea during its inaugural lunch. 1992 saw the decommissioning of Fort Shevchenko after several decades. The vessel functioned in the Baltic region for roughly 10 years in various capacities before becoming the Marine La Famille Express in 1999, flying the Panamanian flag and operating as a small freighter in the Caribbean. The La Famille Express had reached the end of its useful life and was being used to transport bulk rock, which is not what a valuable freighter ship would be used for. During Hurricane Francis in 2004, the La Famille Express became securely anchored in the shallow seas of the Caicos Banks. The unmanned ship had dragged its anchor about 12 miles from the Providenciales South Dock area due to the strong winds, 19 kilometers. Near the ship, this anchor is still in the sea. Number 6. 
Wreck of Edward Bolin This sandy skeleton coast victim is far from the sea and appears to have been dropped in the desert. The skeleton coast is a stretch of harsh, lifeless ground where dunes rippled toward the Atlantic Ocean. After their ships were destroyed in the dense fog that frequently spills off the shore in the mornings, sailors were forced to abandon their lives at sea for a harsh, scorching environment. One particular shipwreck seems to be a suitable symbol of the lonely, frightening coast. On September 5, 1909, Edward Boland became stranded on Namibia's skeleton coast after becoming trapped in a dense fog. The 310-foot-long freight ship, which will never make it to Swakopmund to Table Bay, is largely buried in the sand. Strangely, it seems as though the ship has become lost in the middle of the desert. The desert started encroaching on the beach years after it collapsed. The fact that it is more than 1,000 feet from the water makes it a must-see for history and wreck fans and daring desert adventurers. The skeleton coast has become a sort of unintended ship graveyard, dooming the ships and their crews to life in the parched desert. The area around the Edward Bolin is covered in shipwrecks. Some are now nothing more than a few pieces of wood sticking out of the sand, while others are still completely engulfed by the ocean. Number 5. HMVS Cerberus Shipwreck the HMVS Cerberus, also known as Her Majesty's Victorian Ship, served as a prototype for a new class of warships that emerged in the later half of the 19th century. The Cerberus, built for Victoria, the largest individual colony in the British Empire, is named after the three-headed wolf from Greek mythology that guards the underworld. The first breastwork monitor warship in the world was the HMVS Cerberus. Edward Reed, a renowned naval architect in the British Royal Navy at the time, created the ship's design. The Cerberus was built to be propelled over the water by steam force unlike her predecessors, who continued to use sails. Six other ships with the same design as the Cerberus were built in the years that followed in response to the warship's success. The Cerberus was retired from service in 1924 with the distinction of never having fired a shot in its more than 50-year lifetime. She was sold to a marine salvage firm, and eventually the shipwreck was turned into a bulk work in Melbourne's Half Moon Bay. Even though it is perched more perilously than when it was first hauled to the spot, the battleship wreck still lies in Half Moon Bay. Over the years, the shipwreck began to submerge, and once the vessel's hull was visible, people could tour the vessel from prow to stern through the different apertures in the shipwreck. Number 4. Wreck of the SS Kakapo one of the numerous ships that littered South Africa's perilous rocky coast, the SS Kakapo, a 665-ton schooner-rigged steamer, sank herself on the peninsula's long beach on the Atlantic coastline on May 25, 1900. Early seafarers suffered greatly from the lethal combination of storms, fog, powerful ocean currents, hostile cliffs, rocks, and reefs. 360 shipwrecks in Table Bay alone. The SS Kakapo was carrying coal from the United Kingdom to Sydney when she went aground on the Cape of Storms due to a northwesterly gale that made it extremely difficult for the crew to see. Typical winter conditions for Cape Down. The ship accidentally landed on a beach after mistaking without any failures. However, no amount of coercion was able to get her back into the water. According to legend, the captain was so embarrassed by the incident that he refused to leave the ship. Some claim he spent up to three years living aboard. Numerous hikers traversed the entirety of Long Beach to pass the historic shipwreck which is located closest to the Komedji side. Number 3. Wreck of the Steam Trawler Sheraton the fishing boat converted into a battleship is now just its rusted hull. The remains of the steam trawler Sheraton, a tiny boat with a proud history of duty in both world wars, are still visible near St. Edmund's Point in Old Hunstanton. The Sheraton was originally a fishing boat built in Beverly in 1907 to withstand the frequently harsh North Sea. However, the ship was constructed when people were becoming more concerned about the growing military might of a newly united Germany and it was quickly given a new task. The Sheraton was commanded by the Royal Navy and assigned the duty of patrolling anti-submarine booms when war was declared in 1914. It was again employed by the Royal Navy and outfitted with a six-pounder gun during World War II. The vessel served along the North Sea coast and was registered as an armed patrol vessel. 
The Sheraton was given a bright yellow paint job after the war to be used as a target ship, until April 1947, when strong winds drove it to drift from its moorings, the Sheraton was anchored in the wash off Best Sand. A significant portion of the ship's hull may still be visible today at low tide, where it eventually made landfall on the beach of the Old Hunstanton. Number 2. BOS 400 Shipwreck this wreck is rarely seen, contributing to its status as a true hidden treasure due to its eerie and alluring beauty. Off Sandy Bay, South Africa, near the Hout Bay area of Cape Town, one can find a shipwrecked oil rig that is both eerie and gorgeous. Few individuals know its existence, let alone how to travel in it. It's quite a journey to get near the wreck, but the walk along the shore as you get closer to it's stunning. This adds to the intrigue and mystery surrounding this one-of-a-kind location. A storm in 1994 caused the French crane barge known as the BOS 400 to run aground to become beached. It was being towed by a boat that was not strong enough to pull such a big vessel, and the tow rope became disconnected which caused the barge to crash into the rocks just south of Sandy Bay. It was abandoned after it was determined that it was beyond repair and would be difficult to save. Ever since then, it has been rusting there. After making the journey to the point, take some time to relax and take in its ruined splendor from a distance. Number 1. MVE Evangelina Shipwreck In 1942, Harland and Wolf produced the 7,355 GRT refrigerated cargo ship, the MV Empire Strength. She had four identities and seven owners throughout her lengthy career. She was renamed MVE Evangelina when a Greek owner bought her in 1965. Her sailing career ended in 1968 when she ran aground in the Black Sea off the Romanian coast, close to the beach town of Constanesti. She was abandoned after being diagnosed as a constructive total loss due to a fractured back. The wreck is now a popular local attraction. Empire Strength appears to have kept traveling between Australia and Britain via Panama throughout the Second World War. The ship began transporting frozen beef from Buenos Aires to Britain and the Mediterranean in 1944. Throughout its service, the ship had a variety of different names. In 1946, it was renamed Saxon Star and in 1961, Redbrook. Greek ship owners acquired the vessel in 1965 and gave it the new name, E. Evangelina. On October 15, 1968, the E. Evangelina ran aground in the Black Sea at Constanesti while traveling from Yugoslavia to Romania. The ship is still a wreck at Constanesti after being deemed a total loss. On the starboard side, two sizable portions of plates are missing and the superstructure of the ship as a whole has fallen. Its back is also fractured but the wreck of the E. Evangelina continues to be a famous tourist destination in the Romanian seaside town of Constanesti. What do you think about these ships? Share your views in the comment section below. Remember to share this video with your family, friends, and colleagues.